2013, engineers at Boeing ran a secret simulation, an EMPI strike mid-flight. The cockpit lights dimmed, then nothing. They'd built shielding, backups, even analog dials that refused to die. But nobody outside the hangar knew what really happened next. If that same pulse hit you at 35,000 feet today, would training or luck keep you alive? The truth might shock you. The Night the World Learned What an EMP could do. Imagine a flash so brief that it ends before you blink, yet powerful enough to rattle satellites and silence half a continent's lights. That's an electromagnetic pulse, an invisible shockwave that rewrites the rules of electricity for a few breathtaking seconds. It sounds cinematic, almost mythical, but it's real science backed by decades of testing, fear, and fascination. The first time humanity truly saw one, the year was 1962. The United States had launched Starfish Prime, a 1.4 megaton nuclear device detonated 250 miles above the Pacific. At 11 p.m., the Hawaiian night flared into daylight. Street lights failed, phone lines sparked, and more than 300 alarms triggered across the islands, nearly 900 miles from ground zero. The explosion didn't kill anyone, yet it changed how nations thought about technology forever. Why did that happen? Because an EMP is not a single phenomenon, it's three distinct surges. The first, the E1 pulse, is instantaneous, a billionth of a second of chaos that fries delicate electronics. The E2 phase behaves like global lightning, striking broad areas but largely tamed by standard lightning protection. The E3 phase is the slow strangler, the one that seeps into power lines and transformers, bending them under invisible current. Together they form a storm no eye can see, but every wire can feel. Governments took notice fast. During the Cold War, both superpowers studied the weaponized side of EMPS. Congressional hearings in the early 2000s revealed that a single high-altitude detonation could disrupt grid systems over thousands of kilometers. Yet the same reports quietly admitted something else. Short systems, like aircraft, behave differently. They're too compact to catch the long-wave chokehold that devastates power lines. Space weather creates a cousin to this threat. In 1859, the Carrington event, a massive solar flare, set telegraph offices ablaze and delivered shocks to operators. Modern scientists know such geomagnetic storms mimic the E3 phase, stretching currents through the planet's magnetic field. NASA now tracks them daily through satellites like ACE and DSCOVR, constantly measuring the sun's pulse for signs of trouble. So what if an EMP struck while you flew at 35,000 feet? The numbers surprise even experts. At that altitude, an airliner's aluminum shell acts as a natural Faraday cage. Its systems are short, shielded, and built to survive lightning bolts 100 times stronger than ordinary storms. The real risk lies below. Grids, data centers, and communication towers tethered to Earth. Up here, pilots still hold control. Down there, civilization might need to restart the clock. The first wave may take out power, but the wings keep lifting. And that leads to the next mystery. How do modern jets stay alive in a world made of electricity? The answer begins with design board born from fear and perfected by lightning. How engineers turned. Lightning strikes into lessons that made airliners EMP resistant. Picture this, rain hammering the runway, lightning flashing across the sky, and a jet lined up for takeoff. Every pilot knows that moment. The air hums, the metal trembles, and nature throws its best punch. Yet the aircraft rolls, lifts, and climbs through the chaos. That single act explains why a plane can survive an electromagnetic pulse. It's built for punishment. Engineers have spent decades preparing for the worst. In the 1970s, NASA and the FAA started testing how lightning spreads across metal fuselages. They ran current through wings strong enough to melt car engines. The results shaped new safety laws. Each wire, rivet, and joint had to root electricity away from vital systems. The aluminum skin became a Faraday cage, a protective shell that absorbs electric fury and keeps it outside. Every commercial jet follows that rule. When lightning strikes, it enters through one point and exits through another, leaving the cabin calm. The average airliner takes one or two strikes every year, yet crews often never notice. Boeing once reported that their test aircraft endured over 700 simulated strikes before any system failed. That's the invisible armor that an EMP has to beat, and it rarely can. But there's more. Inside each jet lives a network of backups ready to take over if one part falls silent. Two, sometimes three, engine-driven generators feed power to critical systems. There's also an auxiliary power unit, a small turbine in the tail that can restart the entire plane mid-air. And if everything else fails, a ram air turbine 
unfolds like a mechanical lifeboat, spinning in the wind to power flight controls and emergency radios. This design comes from hard lessons. After a DC-10 lost all hydraulics in 1989, engineers swore that every major system would have layers of backup power and control. Today, every large airliner follows that promise. Therefore, when people fear an EMP wiping out a jet's electronics, they miss this deeper truth. The jet is a survivor built to fight nature itself. A lightning bolt can't bring it down, so an invisible pulse has little chance. The real story begins when the radios go silent. What do pilots do when the world below vanishes from their screens? That moment is where the training takes over. When every radio fails at 30,000 feet, how pilots still find their way home. Imagine cruising above the Rockies. The sky glows gold, the engines hum, and everything feels perfect until the radio stop talking back. The screen flashes C-O-M-F-A-I-L. Static floods the headset. For a few heartbeats, the cockpit feels like outer space. No voices, no clearance, no sound. Just you, the aircraft, and silence. This happens more often than most people think. In 1999, Alaska Airlines Flight 536 lost both radios during cruise. The pilots switched frequencies, checked breakers, reset circuits, nothing. Ground control vanished from the headset, but procedure took over. Captain Barry Green squawked 7600, the international code for radio failure. That four-digit number tells every radar screen below, we've gone silent but we're still flying. Controllers immediately clear space. Other aircraft are rerouted, and air traffic control tracks the jet like a ghost in motion. Pilots then follow what's called the AVEF and MEA rules from FAA Regulation 91.185. It's a roadmap written for chaos, assigned, vectored, expected, filed. The route hierarchy that guides a pilot home when no one can talk back. Altitude? They climb or descend to whichever is highest, between assigned, minimum, or expected. It's logic under pressure, simple enough to remember strong enough to save lives. History proves it works. In 2008, a Delta Boeing 757 flying to Atlanta went Nordo, aviation shorthand for no radio. The crew flew their clearance, arrived on schedule, and landed safely using light gun signals from the tower. Steady green meant cleared to land. That system dates back to the 1930s, long before radar and satellites. Even in an EMP scenario, that century-old backup can guide a modern jet home. Therefore, silence doesn't equal danger. Every commercial pilot trains for this from day one. Aviate, navigate, communicate, always in that order. Fly the airplane first, then figure out the rest. Even if the EMP cuts power, the jet still moves, instruments still glow, and hands still steer. The sky rewards calm minds. But once the jet touches down, a new question rises. What happens in the cabin when passengers realize the outside world has gone dark? The next chapter enters their story, inside the cabin. During the blackout, what passengers should actually do when power fades? Imagine sitting by the window at 36,000 feet. The captain's voice fades mid-sentence, the cabin lights flicker, and every screen freezes on the same blue glow. No Wi-Fi, no signal, no updates. For a second, everyone looks up, hundreds of eyes searching for clues in the silence. That's the moment when calm matters more than control. Flight attendants move fast. Their training covers nearly every kind of emergency, loss of power, decompression, even mid-air evacuations. But communication failure is one of the most common. They keep the cabin seated, reassure everyone with short, clear phrases and check if the pilots need anything. A quiet cabin keeps the flight deck focused. That's the rule. Therefore, the smartest passenger is the one who stays still. Keep your seatbelt fastened, your phone on airplane mode, and your essentials close. The world's biggest disruptions rarely happen in the sky. They happen after landing. In 2003, the Northeast blackout grounded hundreds of flights. Airports from Toronto to New York turned into candlelit terminals. Boarding systems went paper only, and ATMS froze. Travelers with print Printed itineraries and cash got through first, those with digital-only backups stood in line for hours. So, before you fly, think like a crew member. Keep your ID, meds, and a small flashlight in reach. TSA rules allow medicine and small power banks in your carry-on for this reason. If you need proof of how vital that can be, look at 2010's volcanic ash shutdown in Europe. Tens of thousands stranded, relying on chargers and printed maps to cross borders manually. Preparation makes you part of the solution. Airlines build for lightning, but pass Passengers must plan for the waiting. Therefore, download maps before you board, save hotel confirmations offline, and carry at least $200 in small bills. Technology loves to fail when you depend on it most. Every jet carries redundancy for flight. Humans need redundancy for life. When the ground systems lag, the calm traveler becomes the rare advantage. And once the plane lands in a world half awake and half powered, a new challenge begins. How to cruise bring a sky full of silent aircraft safely home? The answer unfolds next. 
When the ground loses control, how pilots decide where to land in a silent world picture, a night sky full of aircraft. Hundreds of blinking lights trace invisible paths over continents. Then, in an instant, ground communication fades. Towers lose power, radar screens dim, and the network that guides every flight goes silent. Up there, pilots rely on the one thing left, their training. When a radio failure stretches beyond a few minutes, the flight crew doesn't panic. They shift to procedure. The captain and first officer scan their checklists, cross-check instruments, and confirm power from every backup source. Then they make a plan. If the outage covers wide ground, the goal becomes simple. Reach a safe airport with daylight, long runways, and fuel to spare. History has already shown how well this works. In 2014, a solar flare triggered brief GPS interference over Scandinavia. Airlines switched to older navigation methods within minutes. No diversions, no chaos, just quiet professionalism. The idea of lost navigation sounds terrifying, but pilots train on paper charts long before they ever fly a jet. Analog never fails. Therefore, most diversions follow logic, not luck. Large hubs, places like Chicago, Dallas, or Frankfurt, have backup power and trained emergency crews on standby 24 hours a day. A pilot aiming for safety heads there. The process may look chaotic from the ground, but inside the cockpit it feels methodical. Every instrument gets verified. Every descent is coordinated through transponder codes, light gun signals, and old-school radio techniques if anything still works. After landing, a new world greets the passengers. Picture terminals running on generators, airport staff guiding arrivals with flashlights, and immigration desks stacked with paper forms. In 2017, a major power cut at Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson grounded more than 1,000 flights and left passengers in darkness for 11 hours. Yet every jet that approached landed safely. That's the hidden truth. Aviation survives disruption better than almost any other system on Earth. So when the airport turns into a sea of headlights and handwritten notes, the flight crew stays steady. The journey isn't over, but the hardest part, keeping metal and soul safely together in the sky, has already succeeded. And once the wheels stop rolling, the story turns to the final question. How do you travel smart in a world built on fragile power? How to travel smart and stay calm. After an EMP event, imagine landing after a flawless flight, only to find the airport dark. The jet bridge stands frozen. The monitors glow blue for a second, then fade. No Wi-Fi, no baggage updates, no card payments. People start whispering, but the crew stays calm. This moment separates travelers who prepared from those who depend on luck. Every disaster, from hurricanes to cyber outages, teaches the same lesson. In 2017, a massive IT crash grounded British Airways for two full days. Tens of thousands stranded, hundreds of flights canceled. Yet the passengers who had paper boarding passes, local cash, and offline hotel maps made it through. The rest spent the night on terminal floors. Preparation sounds simple until you need it. Before boarding, load your phone with offline maps and digital boarding passes. Save hotel addresses and notes, not just in emails. Keep a small flashlight and a power bank in your carry-on. Lithium batteries stay safer up here, where the crew can handle any issue instantly. The TSA backs this rule for a reason. Then think smaller. Three days of medicine, a printed copy of reservations, and around $400 split between two spots. In 2003, during the Northeast blackout, ATMs died within hours and credit systems froze across eight states. People who carried cash became lifelines for others. Sometimes survival looks like simple readiness. Air travel works on layers of redundancy. Pilots have backups for every backup. Passengers can borrow that mindset. A printed map never loses signal. A flashlight never needs permission from a cell tower. Therefore, travel becomes smoother when you assume electricity is optional. The truth is, airliners already live by that philosophy. They're tested against lightning, shielded from radiation, and equipped to power themselves in silence. When the world flickers, the aircraft endures. So as the engines cool and you step into a quiet terminal, remember, the flight may be over, but the test has just begun. The ones who walk out calmly are those who plan for the dark. And that calm, more than any gadget, is what keeps modern travelers ahead of the storm. The sky never fell, because it never had to. What comes after the landing is the part few talk about. Click the next video now before it fades. It's where the story continues.